It's uh, really a, a wonderful thing to be able to see all of you. Um, and uh, before I uh, introduce, I want to thank all of you for the support. Um, giving us calls, uh, Irene, Mary, Danielle, are uh, eager to answer any questions you might have. And, and I got to tell you, it really means a lot to us uh, that we have this connectivity and this method of being able to uh, see our artists. Um, we had the pleasure today uh, of having Aya Oki, uh, who was one of our um, uh, artists in residency for DMG School Project. And uh, it was absolutely wonderful because most of the time when we bring in the artists, we get to know them over a weekend if I haven't had a previous uh, relationship with them. But with Aya, she was there for over six weeks. Um, uh, even saw her the following weekend at Pilchuck. Um, but uh, it's um, really wonderful to get to know these artists and what an opportunity to see how they make their work and being in their studios. Um, I would like to thank all of you for being here, but I particularly want to thank as well, Irene, Danielle, and Mary for hosting this, and Aya Oki. So Mary, uh, maybe you could start? Sure. Thanks, Duncan, and thanks everyone for joining us. We're so happy to have Aya here. As Duncan said, she was a resident artist with us. I think it was last year or maybe two years ago. Time goes by so quickly. And uh, she's rapidly gained acknowledgement in the glass art world for her innovative techniques, her wonderful personality, uh, her expression of uh, joie de vivre that comes across in her work. So um, I know that Aya wants to share, start by sharing a little bit about where she came from, how she came to uh, live and work in the US and how she came to create the kind of work that she's uh, been known for, but also she's exploring and creating new work too. So um, we're going to start, I think Aya has a presentation about her life and her beginnings in the U.S. and her beginnings uh, just in love with art. So uh, Danielle's going to queue up something for us. And I feel free to uh, talk to us about what we're seeing. Okay. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for having me. This is a great opportunity to share my work. Um, I am, uh, my name is Aya Oki. I am from Japan. Um, this is Tokyo, and this one is Osaka. If you know Osaka, um, in my hometown, Nara is right next to Osaka. And this is Nara, Japan, um, where I grew up, uh, where I was born and grew up. And this is a high school I went. It has an uh, art major. So I really like making um, something by my hand, but also I like the painting. So I chose this school and my major was Nihonga. It's a Japanese type painting. And uh, all the ingredients for painting is, uh, uh, all the materials is uh, from mineral. And uh, I was, I had to make a, like a, a hamburger patty to make a paint. So that really reminds me of making mud bowls that I, I used to make when I was a kid. And um, I really liked the painting, but also I wanted to make something by my hand. So when I went to, uh, when I had to think about the college, uh, I wanted to, um, uh, make, I, I wanted to choose something that I can uh, experience with all the materials. And um, I met this uh, professor, Peter Ivy. He is now in Japan, uh, Toyama in Japan. 
having a, his own studios. Um, yeah, he really, he's the one who uh, made me want to choose glass as my material. And this is from my undergrads. Um, I was more focusing on making functional work. And uh, this is um, also from undergrad. Um, I was focusing on the glass expanding. So I have a little ball in the cup and uh, have a, another bubble uh, pushing against the ball. And this is my uh, thesis work uh, from undergrad. And uh, I was focusing on more traditional techniques. And also we had uh, lots of visiting artists from the States. Um, because uh, Peter is from the States, uh, we had the opportunity to meet other artists from the States. And uh, Peter took me to this uh, summer workshop, uh, he had uh, opportunity to teach there. So I was, he took me there as his TA and it really changed my life. Um, after I came back from Piljak, I started focusing on my um, uh, grad, uh, the thesis work for grad school because I wanted to work and uh, study under Peter more. So I decided to stay um, AUE and uh, work with Peter. So when I was in undergrad, undergrad, I was more focusing on techniques, uh, traditional techniques, and then learn about the glass. But the more I, I, the more I learned about the glass and the materiality of glass, that makes me more make more uh, want to make more abstract work. And uh, after I graduated my grad school, I had uh, this uh, opportunity to work at the glass studio uh, that we made uh, productions and uh, but also teach how to grow glass for the public people. And during that time, I was also making my new work. And this is uh, the same picture that I show you earlier, but the, the last picture was uh, I expanded the, the that work to this piece. Um, this is how my work usually expands and uh, develops. And um, I really wanted to study abroad, so. Uh, I came here, um, California State University, San Bernardino in 2009 to study English first. And uh, at the same time, I met this incredible artist, Catherine Gray. Uh, she's my favorite artist. And uh, yeah, I was studying English, but also I was able to watch her glass class. And uh, during that time, I was also having my solo show in Japan. So it was, I was like a back and forth between Japan and the States, but uh, it, was, it was a really great opportunity to show my work in the society and um, make more, more career as an artist. So I feel like this piece was more refined and uh, I was really happy with those works. And actually I'm having a show, uh, that group show is uh, four times now, and that is actually going on right now in Japan. And uh, also this is another work that I was um, creating and uh, more focusing on the bubbles uh, contained inside of the bottle. And uh, I really like the, the bubbles pushing each other inside. And um, these bubbles are also sucked in inside of the bubble instead of blowing out. And uh, I was able to enter um, to the California State University, San Bernardino. And um, 
after a year, uh, after a year, after I studied English, I had to go back to Japan for a year. And then I was able to came back to California. And this is my uh, studio. I was for, uh, more trying to um, find the best way to show my work. And I was also interested in um, going to uh, Rochester Institute of Technology um, to work with Michael Rogers and Robin Cass. And uh, I, ha I made a, a lot of made a uh, lot of work and research a lot of uh, about the glass during my time uh, over there. Um, seeing my thesis show, um, I came up to the uh, idea that uh, my focus is that more lifelike quality of, of glass and puffy, squishy, uh, stretchy uh, properties of glass. And uh, I love this piece. Um, this is more, I love watching glass expanding inside of the wire cage. So this one, I, I blow the bubble inside the wire cage and then the glass expands. Um, and then I put them together, looking at the, um, those bubbles pushing each other. And that was my focus. And another work. Um, this one is uh, bubbles are pushed against uh, the uh, one sheet of glass. And um, the sheet is uh, sandblasted. So once you um, blow the bubbles against the, the sheet glass that's <laughs> sandblasted, the part that you, the uh, bubbles touch to the, the part gets kind of moist look and uh, that's really uh, makes me feel the glass has lifelike qualities. And uh, after graduating, I came back to Cal California and uh, started working with Kathy uh, as her TA, but also I work uh, for her, um, I, I work with her uh, for her personal work too. And uh, I am uh, going to talk about my residency experience because my work develops every time I go to residencies. Um, residencies are really great because uh, it's a, such a long term that I can focus on my work. I, I can make my test piece and then develop my work or I already have a work uh, idea and then develop my work from that. And uh, this was in New Jersey, Wheaton Arts. Uh, I made a bunch of parts and then um, brought the piece back to home. And then uh, I was still working on um, to mount all the pieces. And then uh, this one was at the Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Uh, this was a one semester long residency, so it was almost a four month residency. It was really great, great amount of time. And uh, I started making this bubble piece that which I am currently still developing. Um, but uh, yeah, this time I, I was only using just the color glass. Uh, and then this work was also developed from the uh, last residency that I had in New Jersey. And I visited the Sinaka Studios in Texas. Um, I was making more new work. And uh, I really liked being, I really like being a student. student. Uh, taking workshops and uh, because I get every time I, I take a class I learn something new and that uh, brings different ideas to me and um, 
this is a uh, I visited Starworks. It was a uh, one week long. I visited them and uh, had a time uh, able to make um, this work with with patterns this time. And then in 2018, I was able to have residency at the BMG. Um, so I was developing more uh, my current work there. And then after the residency, I uh, went back to California and in the studio, uh, I had a more idea at the BMG, so I wanted to try that out uh, at home. So uh, this is uh, pictures from uh, my studio, uh, it's not my studio, but it, it's a uh, Cal State San Bernardino. Uh, the studio is a, a little uh, small, but uh, it's, a, it's a enough to make create uh, students work and then also work with uh, everybody. And uh, I last year, this is the last year, uh, in 2019, I had this uh, residency in Boda, Sweden, uh, made more work with more colors. And uh, this is at the Tacoma Museum of Glass uh, last year. Uh, the, my piece is getting a little bigger scale, and I learn I learn a lot um, as the scale gets bigger. Uh, it's a, the process is also changed, uh, so I learn a lot. And uh, this is uh, at the Corning Museum of Glass. I had a residency there um, last November. And this is more like a performance, but I had my first performance in my life at the Chrysler Museum, Museum Glass Studio. And uh, I was, uh, I really wanted to show the audience that, um, like how exciting a glass is. And um, so I create this um, clear big bubble that has five holes and I have five assistants to blow color glass inside at the same time. So it's a pretty exciting moment if you see the five color bubbles blown up and push each other inside of the big bubble. So I have a, a little video of it. Um, this is at the Pilchak Glass School when I um, taught there. <laughs> and uh, I also did at the uh, Tacoma Museum of Glass. This is something that uh, I can do with all this help from people. And uh, I really love uh, team working. So I can only try this work when I have this much of help and people. Is that a technique that you developed yourself, Aya? Uh, this is, yes, this is, I, my idea was that how um, I can see the bubbles expand um, at the same time inside of the like a container, like contain um, the bubbles uh, by containing inside of, um, like make some restrictions and then grow the bubbles at the same time. I wanted to see how it's going to look like. So I came up with this idea. I love it. Thank you. And then these pictures are um, from my uh, teaching experience. Last year, I went to Minnesota to teach for spring semester, and uh, that was from January to May, uh, the picture from the left, and uh, those, they're my students, and um, also teaching at Pilchak and Penland School of Craft, and I really enjoy teaching and learn 
learning about glass with students. And um, yeah, I have now I have a more um, opportunity to teach and which I love. And this is a brainstorming map from my students. So I always ask my students, uh, what's glass and what's glass for you? What is your impressions um, of glass? And, um, and then have them to come up with their ideas. And then do you try to help them explore all of those little pieces of their ideas? I mean, that yes. could lead you to many, many different places. Yes, there's uh, so many ideas, but we can, um, as long as, so they, they're gonna choose one word, for example, and then we try that, how, how we can use a glass to, to show that aspect. To, to express that one word, whatever that is, that they're trying to realize. It's a brilliant yeah. teaching technique, actually. Um, brings it from, you know, the, the technical aspect down to a very personal place for each student. Um, mm -hmm. So I have a question. All your work seems to be about um, the expanding of glass and, mm -hmm. and, and the bubble. Mm -hmm. um, and I know later on we talk about inhaling and exhaling. Does that have a personal significance to you? Uh, I actually have um, thought about the, why I'm interested in that. And uh, because I really like looking at the glass expanding and, and then how soft it looks and uh, I want to touch it and want to make more tactile piece. And um, I was really, one day I was really thinking about that and then why I'm interested in, in that. And uh, I, um, I wanted to ask my parents if they know something because all the ideas comes from like how I grow up and uh, it's from my environment that I grow up. So I asked my parents, uh, do you know why I like really squishy stuff or uh, droopy stuff and something like that? And uh, they didn't really have a uh, clear answer, but I think that uh, um, I just really love um, the property of glass that's puffy, squishy, and smushy, and uh, it also looks like it's like living and has um, lifelike qualities that um, that I say lifelike qualities. Um, that's that's what I want to show to my audience because that's my passion coming from, and uh, um, I really want to share that with my audience. Well, it really comes across, and we're we're delighted. Um, and I know that you have now. We have a presentation. Also, oh, we have one comment. Uh, Christine says that you really make something terribly hard look so easy and <laughs> think that you're uh, making birthday balloons and what a joy it is and certainly that joy in while you're exploring the medium and and obviously uh, being very uh, technically expert that joy is also coming through so Christine's thanking you and and we thank you as well. Thank you. I really like uh, what you said because joy is is a really important point when I make my work and joy and the happiness because that that makes me more encouraged and uh, want to make more peace using glass. Well, I know that um, we're going to show people some of the more technical aspects again of how you realize that vision. So um, again, please share what we're looking at here. So uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about the uh, process of my work. And uh, these are a little um, early work, um, how I started making this series with a 
all the patterns and you can see this crisscross pattern. Uh, so first I make this crisscross pattern and then uh, make a bubbles around it. So this pattern really makes me, um, uh, gives me the materiality of glass. If I don't, if I don't see this pattern, I might not be able to uh, see this materiality of glass. And uh, I want to talk about my uh, that process, um, looking at the, my experience at DMG. And this was my this is my uh, one month schedule at DMG. I had seen that, by the way. Sorry, we were just so. <laughs> Yeah, so I have to prepare um, a lot of piece um, before I actually create the sculpture. Um, so yeah, they are all pieces uh, I made at the DMG. Um, with bubbles, a uh, few bubbles, uh, but all has, uh, crisscross pattern. And uh, so crisscross pattern is made by this cane. Uh, we call cane, this looks like a little stick. This is how I make cane. First I make long, long cane. I pull this till the end of the whole way. And then I cut them like about the five inches and then make two sets of uh, cane. And then I twist one way, like twist to the left for one cup and then twist to the left, uh, right for the other cup. This is how I roll up a cane and how I twist the canes. And then when I uh, put the, those two cups together, mm -hmm. I can make uh, this not the final color. Mm -hmm. pattern. You don't know. And then uh, this it's gonna be my base shape, um, base pattern. Um, this is uh, after I make a cup, I'm going to pick this up to make my sculpture after. So I made a pattern, several kinds of patterns. This is a video um, with um, Stephen Hagan. He was the other resident artist. Um, this is Steve, um, and I, I had a two art assistants too, and uh, this piece is uh, actually the same piece, this one is the same piece, and I had um, uh, some colors, different colors together, so you can see a little colors, uh, lines, di different colors in the bubbles. And uh, this one is another piece. Uh, I wanted to have more tight pattern and, and more lines. So I already put the um, five white lines when I make a cane. So it already have five lines. And then when I twisted them, I have more lines and it's tight. So it looks like more lines. And then for this piece, I uh, use the black transparent color over it. So I stuff cup this uh, pattern into the black uh, cup so that you can see this is a result. Uh, you can see the black, um, dense black in, inside more in the middle. And then as it expands, you can see light, your lighter color. And uh, I have more lines, uh, tight lines. 
And also some of my work um, for sand blasting. And sand blasting is that you can make a glass look frosted, uh, a little more white looking, so that the, the glass can hold the light more. And uh, they are all sand, uh, those are sand blasted piece. And, uh, it's a little more foggy looking. And I was able to photo shoot and have a show at the DMG. And uh, then my friend uh, came to my show and uh, uh, it was great uh, to have all the relationship between myself, galleries and my audience. And, uh, yeah, and uh, this is uh, my work. Um, uh, and uh, on the light. It was a great exhibit and it was wonderful to have you. We have a very, I want to go back, Aya, to this part of your creating sculpture. You started to explain a little bit about what it was like for you to create a piece here. And can you expound on that just a little bit more? Sorry, sorry, Mary, can you say it again? Yes, uh, can you talk a little bit more about what it takes to create a sculpture? You used this, um, this calendar? Uh-huh. And you- So you, you mean the, um, explain about the process in this? Yes, please. Okay, um, so you see the pink circle that it's the day I make all the canes. So I just pull canes all day long. Pull canes, pull canes, and then cut canes. And then in the blue circle, I make blanks. So um, that means I make crisscross pattern. That's the day I make only crisscross pattern. And then um, that that is actually uh, gonna be picked up another day. So I make just the patterns. And then finally in the yellow circle, I, I can use that pattern to make a sculpture. So it really uh, takes time to make one, one piece. Um, I need a lot of preparation for it. And uh, white, um, in the white uh, square, uh, that's the day I did cold working. Cold working is that uh, um, there's always uh, excess of glass, uh, glass part that I want, I need to engrave or polish um, in the end of, before I show my piece. Um, so I need to, that's the day I polish my piece. So uh, Susan is asking, so do you produce a different piece each week or, or do you have a variety of pieces ready by the end of the month? I, every day, uh, I, I, uh, I don't make sculptures, like finished piece every day uh, because, because of all the preparation uh, I need, I need make, uh, to the, the parts to be able to make my sculpture. So you can see all the yellow circles. That's the day I was, uh, I made my sculpture, actual finished piece. Thank you. Um, so we have a couple people asking about your inspiration. Uh, Joni asks if you were uh, inspired by Totoro, uh, cartoon <laughs> and uh, Judy asks were you inspired by the Jeff Koons animals yes I actually uh, uh, Totoro is my favorite uh, Japanese anime <laughs> Studio Ghibli is my favorite I grew up with Studio Ghibli and uh, I think I think yeah, Totoro is, you know, since Totoro is like a giant animal, uh, if you don't know, uh, 
it's actually the ghost. Um, but really cute looking and it's really squishy. You can, um, it, it's covered by hair, but uh, it, I can tell it's really squishy. And um, one, uh, once he uh, breathes in, like he has big belly and it's really, uh, it's really soft looking. And uh, I'm sure I get the inspiration, like somehow, Maybe it's a different way, like there's a uh, transition of uh, getting my ideas because I grew up with that. Uh, yeah, so somehow in different way, I think that inspires me too. That's a part of, part of my idea um, to come up with. And um, Jeff Poon's piece, I really love his balloon piece. I actually um, looked at his work, like just staring at his work um, and then long time and then it looks, it's really intriguing to me um, that puffy looking and balloons um, and um, during that time I was staring at the piece I think about how I can make my work like this it's really make me intriguing and um, um, how I can uh, make my audience just like him like my other uh, audience is is really enjoying the piece um, so yeah sure I, I really love his work Thank you. Um, we also have a question. Uh, Danielle is wondering, uh, she'd like you to discuss the sucking in technique for your bubbles. And I think we're actually going to see some of that maybe, but if you want to talk a little bit about it before or during uh, the, pres the film where you're breathing in and breathing out while you create your piece, but maybe give us a little bit of an introduction about what that's about. Sure. Um, so uh, when I had this uh, idea, I, I was thinking about, um, you know, I always blow glass, but what if I suck in the bubble and then I made the test piece. Um, I had a little bubble, clear bubble, and then heat um, really, really hot, just the, the, the part that I want to suck in the glass uh, with a hot torch. And then so I heat, 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 heat the part and then put the additional hot, really hot fresh glass on it and then suck in the bubble, suck in the glass. And, and then I really liked it. So I, I then I came up with, oh, what if, what if I do that again and again? And then I will be able to see the bubbles contained inside of the glass. And I tried that and then I really loved it. So since then I, I was more um, thinking about the shape that how I can show the bubbles uh, the, the best way to show and uh, to see the you know bubbles pushing each other inside of the container, and that's how I start um, starting this. Because we'll see one bottle where the bubbles are in the interior, and then your other pieces, the bubbles are in the exterior. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's always from come from my wonder like. What if? What if it always um, gives me an idea? Well, that's that's our mantra these days. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think we're going to see a, a video where you're actually doing this, the breathing. Yeah. In. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this piece. Um, 
is my bubble piece with a crisscross pattern. Um, I make an air hole because I want to still blow, still be able to blow glass. So I transfer the piece to the other pipe so that I can work on the other side. And then I close it down and then uh, cut the excess part. Then I'm done with make uh, smooth out the other side and then make a bunch of bubbles out of uh, out of it. So it, it takes about four hours to finish this sculpture. And um, this piece, these pieces are more bigger scale. Uh, when the piece gets bigger, I it's really hard to going back to the bench and then heat in the hole. Um, that action is really hard because it's really heavy. Um, and um, so I work with work, I don't go back to the bench, but I you I worked on the yoke all, all the time. So yoke is the one that supports a pipe that you can see. It's a giant piece and um, it really helps if I work on the yoke and I don't have to go back in the force between the uh, hole and the bench. And more blowing. And this was at the Corning Museum of Glass last November, uh, it took long time it, it, it took eight hours um, we took take took a turn to take a break and lunch um, but i was so happy uh, that i was able to make this piece with my team and how large is that aya oh 55 it's like, yeah it's like uh, how big is it well 20 or 20 inches wide, maybe something like that. So here I'm inhaling the glass. So I heat the, the part I want to make bubble and put additional fresh glass. It's really hot. And then suck in the glass. So there's already a hole there? Um, there, there's no hole, but as I suck in the bubble, there's a hole, like I, I create the hole at the same time. It's not the solid because I suck in, so it's like a bubble, it's, it's a bubble uh, created inside. I love watching these videos. <laughs> yeah, this is how I um, make my work by exhaling and uh, inhaling. Um, would anyone like to ask Aya some further questions about that process? I don't know of anyone else that's doing that at the moment. No? First, I was making that thing clear. But then once I used the, the cane um, to make a pattern, and then that really helps, um, that really helps me um, looking at the bubbles, like how, how the bubble is, uh, is shaped inside of the container or outside expanded. Uh, even though it's, the bubbles are expanded, the, all the bubbles are pushing each other too. And uh, I like the having the patterns. Um, so I use uh, 
it was not a crisscross pattern for inhaling keys uh, because uh, crisscross pattern was uh, I thought it it was too much um, to see, so I just used the stripe cane pattern. So I see how the glass moves and then how the bubble is shaped with that the stripe pattern. So in your work, I mean, you obviously have some very traditional glass blowing techniques and you're working with people from all around the world. Does any of your traditional training from your traditional painting or anything like that come back and influence what you're doing now? Do you see? Yes, uh, it's really, um, my work is all about understanding the materiality of the glass and uh, how I can fuse myself into the piece um, with, with my idea. And uh, uh, earlier I said uh, I like taking workshops and classes because uh, I always get the new ideas. And uh, I think uh, learning the techniques is actually about learning the uh, about understanding the materiality of glass. So I could make, um, I could come up with some ideas and then try out the test piece, but also because I learned the traditional techniques uh, that really teach me, teach me about the glass and um, yeah, Every time I learn new techniques and I come up with more ideas and I have more options. Thank you. We have a couple questions. Um, Linda asked, when you suck in the bubble, is the air extremely hot? Of course, we're all concerned for you when we see you and hear about you doing that. You said hot? Hot, yeah. Hot. Yes, uh, it's not uh, hot that I, I get the burn. But uh, uh, if you see, uh, I have a tube. It's, a, it's called extension tube that I can blow or uh, suck in the glass by myself, not using assistance. Um, so I, when I make this bubble series, I always have extension tube, extension cord. Um, and then, um, so it's not like, it's not hot at all when I, when I inhale. Okay. And yeah. uh, Joni asked, would you, uh, she would like to hear more about those color pieces that kind of look like puzzle pieces. So, um, the, with a ball? I, I think so, or the squares maybe, yeah. yeah. Yes, at that time, uh, so my idea was from that, the one of the picture that I show you, uh, it's a cup with bowl and then the color bubbles expanded inside of the cup. And then that was the start because I wanted to see something uh, exciting uh, moment. I wanted to capture the exciting moment uh, of glass. So um, I made a cup piece first. But uh, when, when I think about functional piece, I, um, I thought oh, it doesn't have to be functional. I want to just show um, that moment of glass that I like. So I started making it um, more like a sculptural style. And uh, I decided to make square metal blow mold that I can blow the bubbles inside. So I made a bowl first and then keep it inside of the pickup oven that's, that's uh, I mean, it's like a thousand degree. So that, and then, so that I can pick that up uh, later with, with the other bubble. So I, I make this color, different color of a bubble 
um, and then put the ball to that bubble and then immediately blow into the square metal mold. So I can push, uh, I can push the, push against the ball, push uh, the, the bubble against the ball, but also that bubble is pushed against the metal mold. So it's really like, uh, ball is really gathered inside of the, the other bubble. And uh, I really, really love that moment. And I wanted to show variety of that moment. So I made a square so that I can stack them. So, so it, you are kind of creating a puzzle um, by putting- Yeah, it's like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Um, we're looking at some beautiful pieces behind you. I don't know if you have a moment to to just pan. Um, is this your studio or? Uh... This is actually uh, one of the space at, at home. Um, now, uh, I don't have a studio access uh, right now. Uh, I usually use the uh, studio at the Cal State San Bernardino. So it's on campus and now, it, unfortunately, it's closed. So I, I haven't been able to create any of my work this year. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I wanted to share my work that um, some of my work are um, still with me. So I wanted to set up the, my piece. Well, thank you. Room. You're thank welcome. You. And Christine is really worried about your kitty back there. Um, oh, <laughs> yes. She, she doesn't really uh, touch the glass. <laughs> She's fine. I don't know about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So I think we have uh, some images of, of your, the work that we're seeing right behind you. So we can look at the pieces um, piece by piece. Sure. There you are. <laughs> okay. This is right behind me. Um, my favorite piece, uh, plump. Um, I can just uh, stare at this piece long time. <laughs> and how are they affixed to the back back uh, mounting? How are they mounted? It's like, um, a French cleat. So it's really, you can hang on the wall with French cleat mount on the wall. Beautiful. And I used a uh, rubber thread um, in this, uh, these gaps. I put the black rubber thread. And uh, this one is, uh, it's a really thin piece. Uh, I used copper wire. Um, I also really like looking at the inside of grown form. So I made this uh, copper wire cage and then blow the bubble inside. And then I engraved the, around the copper wire so that you can see inside of grown form. And these are different angles of each piece, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, they are different pieces, four of the pieces. Um, they are all different shape. Beautiful. Thank you. And uh, this one has uh, different patterns, uh, different canes, uh, different type of cane. Um, so I can, I use the black, uh, stiff black color and uh, stiff white color. And I was more trying to think about the different patterns. And then more focusing on um, how I can make the dense colors, uh, dense uh, lines, to see the lines more clearly. 
this one is sand blasted. So it's a uh, foggy looking. This one also. This one is the one in the video, uh, process video, same piece. I sand blasted after for finished. And um, this one is the one I made at the, during my Tacoma uh, residency. Um, this one, all, all the bubbles are sucked in. Very interesting. Thank you. It's just really, I really love the moment that the bubbles are created uh, inside of the bottle. It's such a satisfying moment. This one is a piece that I made at the DMG during my time residency. And I believe that is at the gallery, as is this one. Yes, yes. Yeah, this piece is in the gallery, too. This one is uh, also I um, in the uh, PowerPoint, in the slide. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a beautiful uh, body of work. And, uh, you know, it goes to show that if you keep asking what if, you know, you'll keep creating amazing pieces. Um, so where do you think you'll go next with your work? Do you have a concept of after, uh, when you get to work again in the studio, do you have something you'd like to do? Yes, I, um, when I go back to the studio, I really want to develop my work by, uh, uh, e ex not ex uh, inhale, using an inhale, um, uh, technique um, because I want to make uh, make it more sculptural piece so I did uh, some experiment at the Corning Museum of Glass last November um, I made this stripe pattern um, in the middle of the big bubble and then uh, sucked in the bubbles, but uh, I made the bubbles only on the pattern, on the stripe pattern, but not the clear part. So um, after I made that um, sucked in all the bubbles and then cut and remove all the, well, uh, all the clear part so that I can keep only um, the uh, bubbles and then with the patterns. So, sorry, it's a little confusing to picture, um, but I, I, wanna, I want to develop that work when I go back to the studio and uh, with a little bigger scale uh, because this piece is, it's, um, it could be small, but I think the size is really important when I make sculpture because the moment that I love is the part I want to show to the audience. And uh, I really want to point out that uh, part. So I want to, I would like to make it bigger scale next time. How many assistants do you think you'll need? I will need at least um, one is for turning for me, turning the pipe for me, and then open the door uh, to an assistant, and then giving me a fresh glass. Um, so one, two, three, at least three or four assistants. Which um, but ahead for you, Aya. I'm sorry, Mary. We're just planning ahead for you. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> well, Thank great. you so much for sharing so much about you and your work. Uh, that was really lovely. I, I know that Duncan wants to thank you as well.
Duncan, you're muted. Um, so, uh, so we're hoping to have Aya come back uh, in the in the spring if everything quiets down. Uh, we'd love to have her. We loved her to be there uh, in the hot in the gallery. You yeah. are so delightful, Aya. Uh, we would love to have you back. So, if you can't go uh, to that studio, maybe come see us again, and uh, we have more people to help you this time. That's wonderful. I love, I love going back there. Yeah, I would love to see you. You were delightful. You did such a great job today. I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, and come see us at the gallery. Uh, we're open very limited amount. Uh, you can call us and we'd love to meet with you. So thank you very much today. Um, and hope to see you soon. We'll see you next week. Next week, we have uh, Sid Hutter, who's a master of contemporary design and glass. Very interesting technique, very different from Aya, but really fascinating work. So thank you, everybody, and thank you, Aya. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Okay.